Right, the next one we're going to use the similar kind of technique that we used in the last area light, but this time we are going to concentrate on doing a neon tube. Now, obviously, you remember this when we actually started, when we actually constructed this within the uh, training session back in March. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and uh, create the uh, neon tube effect uh, that we designed back then. So let's have a quick look at the scene. Let's just render it out. So what we've got to start with is we've got a basic uh material assigned to this um, large spline here which is set to renderable uh, we've got a material assigned to it uh, with a material effect id of one which is then linked in with the lens effect glow here which has its material id effect set to one so that corresponds with that guy there so this gives us like a nice orangey uh, glow effect, but obviously we don't have any corresponding illumination. So what we want to do is we want to create like a you know a nighttime uh, effect with this um, with this tube here. So what we can do is same principle as before. Uh, we can literally use this spline, even though it's you know it's, it's set to renderable, and you can actually see geometry in the viewport. If it's a spline, we can basically scatter objects down it using the uh, uh, spacing tool as before. So again, as before, let's just go through and create a basic setup. Now, what we don't need to do is we don't need to worry about uh, the settings to start with. So we can basically just go through and let's just kill everything. Again, it's using settings that are in from a previous scene, so therefore I'm just going to get rid of those so we're, as if we're starting from scratch. Okie dokie. Right, so we've got this basic light to start with. So let's label that Omni uh, Neon Tube. Again, 01. And what we'll do is uh, we'll use the uh, spacing tool, choose the path, which is that guy. And we've got a number of lights being scattered along it. So what I think we'll do is we're going to, we're going to crank those up. We'll, we'll, we'll turn it up to 50. Now, as I apply that, one thing springs to mind straight away. And that is we've got an absolute shitload of lights in there. So because of which, having shadows that are going to be too high is going to be detrimental to our... Um, uh, render times we might as well just use like you know a gi solution if we're going to have them too big so what we need to do is need to ensure that this setting is pretty low it is for the particular this particular point but if we have it at 512 with a standard value of four let's just go in and have a look how bad and how long that actually takes it's still calculating shadows it's taken a little while to, to render and the result obviously looks pretty crap so what we need to do is we need to obviously take the color from the material that we're using. So let's just right click on the color swatch, click on copy, paste it in there, render it again. The lag that you're actually seeing there is when the actual shadows are being um, uh, calculated. It's got a little bit of shadow coming off here. Now, what we need to do now to obviously reduce the um, uh, the render time, the actual shadow calculation time. It's not taking that long, but if we've got more complex lights and if we've got like an entire city scene or you know an entire street scene or shop scene, it's obviously going to take a long time to actually calculate. So let's just drop that down to one to eight, so it's nicely more diffused, and then let's just zoom in. And what we can also do now, again, same principle as before, inverse square decay. Let's set the width of the start, which is in essence the size, the width of the bulb, in essence, uh, to the size, the width of this spline here. Now we can see a rough indication of what this is going to look like in the viewport. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this plane. And I'm just going to increase this so we can see a better representation of illumination in the viewport. Now. We don't need to actually have this amount of segments in the final render because it's just literally a flat plane. We can turn that back down to one or four or whatever. Um, but just for viewport representation, it's good to just you know see how how big this throws off. So we can now just take this 
and increase the multiplier value so we can actually see how far this is actually going to go now one thing that we didn't do in the last tutorial is we didn't tell the lights exactly when to stop calculating so if we've got an actual you know we've got a load of lights out here which aren't going to really be illuminated by this strip light because the um, the throw or sorry the uh, the decay is going to kick off it's going to roughly be about zero around here we can tell max to stop calculating it so if we enable far attenuation we can basically set this to say okay let's let's set it to about 400 which is roughly about the extent of the the, the plane that they're sitting on so if I now get in a bit closer and what I can do now is just set this rendering it takes less time to actually calculate because we're obviously using a small shadow map size and it's given us a nicer quality render obviously we can see through these teapots uh, basically because they're only uh, one-sided and by default they've got a gap in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select all of these guys I'm going to assign a material to them let's just bring that a bit higher a bit of specularity on it and I'm going to make them two-sided so that they are dark inside yeah, I did assign them to it okay and render that out Now you'll notice they're all gone the same kind of orange tint because the uh, the actual illumination multiplier color is obviously tinted them accordingly. Okay, now as they have some kind of specular value, we obviously need to drop in a reflection as well. So again, as before, I'm just going to use a basic fall off, drop in a ray trace map in there, so we get this kind of nice lacquered effect. So we're now getting this strip light effect. What we should also see, if you notice then straight away, once this render, this glow render effect kicked in, if I just render this out again and burn, zoom in a little bit closer to this guy here, this teapot, if I just render that out, drinking me tea, you'll see that here we actually have the reflection of the tube. Watch this. There you go. You see that little glow kick off. Now, that is something that you need to remember. Um, reflective and refractive uh, render effects like glows and lens flares and that kind of thing. <clears throat> only gets reflected when you're using either a ray trace material or a ray trace map if you just have a transparent uh, material like this and you have for example this object behind it let's just quickly i'll just quickly demonstrate that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a don't have to do this it's just for demonstration purposes I create a sphere, drop that there, put that in perspective, and I'm going to assign this transparent material to it. Now, what you would expect is that the glow be applied all the way through the, uh, the neon tube as before. So if I just render that out, let's see what happens. It's not. And the reason behind that is that material effect IDs, i.e. these guys, this guy here, which tells the glow where to apply it, uh, only gets passed through objects if they have a ray trace material or map assigned to them. Um, the reason behind that is because that these type of uh, effects are done as a as a 2d um, effect after the render is done the effect id is actually stored in the actual render itself obviously you can't see it but it's actually stored behind the scenes in the render so if you uh, occlude it 
then obviously it can't apply it to it. Now what the ray trace does, if I if I enable, if I put a refraction on this now, a ray trace refraction, so let's just drop that guy in there, and I'll make that, and let's leave it as that, so let's render that out again. Now what ray trace, what ray trace refractions do is that we're gonna get this nice, well it's large in fact now, glow area over that because the material ID is passed through the material. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got this kind of nice fall off effect. It's roughly about the right strength. It's illuminating our teapots. We've got this nice inverse square decay. Um, it's affecting the bump map. And we've also got this nice glow effect, which is obviously being uh, transmitted through this um, uh, this glass ball in essence. So just to give it a bit more of effect, I'm just gonna add some specularity to it as well. And let's just do a final render of that. <clears throat> and that's pretty much our final render. So um, I'll see you on the next one. Time for another coffee and maybe a cigarette.